everyone. Welcome to the Women Who Code podcast. My name is Akshita Korvar and I'm hosting today's episode. I'm a software engineer at Data Disney Streaming and also the network director of Women Who Code Seattle chapter. And joining this conversation is Si Jing. Si Jing is a senior data science manager at the Home Depot, supporting home services and pro business. She joined the Home Depot in 2015 as a SEM search analyst and was promoted to analytics manager in 2017 and recently promoted to senior data science manager. She's currently pursuing her master's in computer science with a machine learning specialty from Georgia Tech. She also holds a master's in industrial engineering from Georgia Tech, as well as bachelor's of in industrial engineering from the University of Missouri. Welcome, Si Jing. It is so nice to have you join us today. Um, so to begin, tell me a little bit more about your journey and how you came about being a senior data science manager. First, I would like to thank Women Who Code for giving me the opportunity today to share my story. And I also like to thank my company, Home Depot, supporting me in this event. And to answer your question, so when you look at my education and my position, although they look kind of different, but they are all data related. So my original background was in industrial engineering, where I learned like all the statistics, process improvement, and basic machine learning models. And my science degree is focusing more on advanced machine learning models and on how to develop uh, like database and good systems. And my whole career path is all about data as well. So before I joined Home Depot, I did, a data, uh, I did a data analysis for Siemens and also travel clicks. So when I joined Home Depot, I started as an analyst and supported our home services marketing department. And then I got a promotion as an analytics manager. So where I use all kinds of tools and data, uh, for example, like data visualization, statistics, time series, machine learning to support uh, our uh, online marketing, online and CRM teams. And recently I, I was promoted to senior data science manager. And in this role, it focused more on machine learning and data engineering. That's amazing. Um, so you graduated uh, with a master's in industrial engineering and then held several positions and made it as a data science manager. Um, and you've obviously gained a hands-on experience in this field. So what motivated you to get another master's in computer science and also specialize in machine learning? So when I first started my job at Home Depot as an analyst, so I was kind of one of the few people who on the team and has the data background. So at that time, we don't have centralized data warehouse and we don't have automated reports. And like we have so many isolated systems for different business lines. So I would say like without good data, it's kind of challenging for me to use all my skills, right? So we kind of started with building a SQL database to centralize all the data sources and build all the like automated reports on the top of the database. So it's actually pretty fragile and it fills almost like every week. But our business is still amazed by the work I've done. So a funny story is so I was demoing a report um, to our VP, right? So that's kind of the first report. We have combined all the like data sources from different business lines and systems together. And it's interactive and automated. So, so our VP at that time was like using his pencil and using calculators to, uh, to cross checking all the different numbers. And he was so surprised that all numbers actually match and, and they make sense. So because my report kind of getting popular, so, and also it brought a new level of insights to business uh, they never had before. So I was very lucky that I got a skip level promotion to be an analytics manager. And my biggest project at that time was leading a group of enterprise data warehouse engineers to move all the home services data to cloud. And also, design a way to connect all the upstream systems 
So for example, like all the web analytics systems to our downstream system, like our other system, our lead, uh, lead management system. Right. So the project kind of involves many teams. So there are data engineering teams, there's developers, and there's uh, developers actually supporting all kinds of apps and systems. And there's also like business partners involved. So that's also when I found that my knowledge is not enough. So there is a actually a big knowledge gap between like data engineering, data science, and computer science. And actually, I feel like at that time, no one actually in the team have a, like the knowledge of all the three areas. So I want to fill the gap. So I applied the computer science degree in Georgia Tech. And I took class like database design, software development process. So those classes helped me understand like how to design a good table schema, like, like why we need to avoid new values and what is the software development life, life cycle, right? And how to design uh, and test a system, right? And why we need version control. So it, I also took like advanced modeling classes as well. So for example, like machine uh, deep learning and AI, so they kind of enhance my my data science capability as well. So I learned so many knowledge now. So I try kind of try to apply those in work, but sometimes it's still kind of not clear on how to make everything works in the real life situation, right? So then I, I met my current director. So he kind of have the reverse learning path as mine. So he has a computer science background, but learned data science later. And he built all kinds of uh, foundational data systems and ML flows. So those are kind of what I've been wanting for years. So, and all those systems are actually pretty reliable and scalable. So I was like, wow, that's exactly what I want to learn. And I hope I can work for him. And then luckily I moved to his team two months ago. And so from my experience, so without the a blended knowledge in like engineering, data science, and computer science, it's kind of hard. So like you, you won't be able to design a comprehensive data solution and integrate it with all the business systems to solve the business needs, right? So when I look back, I feel like I made a, the good decision to pursue another like computer science degree. That's great. Uh, I really like your story about taking your business from a manual to an automated uh, process and then you getting a skip level promotion. So that sounds very well deserved. Um, and also, I think from what you said, um, although being in the field, like you theoretical knowledge, gaining that knowledge is still helping you apply that into your current role and grow your team and your business. So um, that's great. Um, so, you know, work is already so stressful for many of us and we work like almost a 40 hour or more uh, hours a week. How are you balancing both being a data science manager and a student? Um, does Home Depot have any special programs that support their employees? Uh, while well, they are at their job and also pursue a degree? So the first question is kind of how to balance work and school, right? So I think time management is the key. So I always like to plan everything in advance. So I know my day job is already busy enough, right? So I look at my schedule and I know that I probably can spend like 10 to 20 hours a week on school. So that means I can probably take one course every semester and then that means I can uh, graduate around like three to four years, right? So I get, I also give myself some buffer. So like if I'm already busy in a couple of months, uh, like I know I'm busy in a couple of months, so I will skip a, a skip a semester. So then I, after I take the class, I will plan like my hours for each week. So I try to finish all my work during the day and during the night of the workdays, I spend around like one to two hours on school. 
and during the weekend, I spend like one more day on school stuff. So with this plan, so I kind of still have a plenty of time, right? So like I can still go to bed around 11 p.m. every day, right? And also I have a free day during the weekend too. So I. I kind of use all the spare time, watch TV shows, uh, read books, play with family and friends. So it's just like a normal person's life. And I feel like my company, Home Depot, gives me huge support on my schoolwork. So our company actually encouraged all their associates to continue learning and pursue new degrees. And also Georgia Tech has pretty high quality and affordable online master programs in both computer science and analytics. So I, I don't have any like financial concerns. Um, and also most of the data science team at Home Depot are remote. So that gives me like extra, at least extra five hours per week on like all the commute time. Also like our leaders and my team are super supportive as well. So actually there's a lot of uh, my coworkers are currently taking another degree. So our leaders actually value these learnings and believe it can enhance our skills and benefit the company. So my director is always very proud of uh, my upcoming degree. And he put like, he, he put it in the, like the team introduction slides, announcement and brag it all the time. And I feel proud of like my associate school works as well. So sometimes I even give them like advice and also like post reviews. So our and plus, so our leaders are very respect our personal time. So they don't expect you to work overtime. Um, so they are good at planning and prioritization. So we kind of can finish everything during the working hours. So we have time to work after uh, to work on school stuff at work. So with all these support and time management, I feel like I'm like I can I can balance it easily. And also, good news is I'm graduating this September, so I made it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Congratulations on that. And while you made everything sound so simple, I'm pretty sure there's like a lot of. Uh, planning, prioritization, and discipline behind it. And uh, I think, yes, uh, support and encouragement from the employee, really, from your employer, uh, makes a huge difference. Uh, so I'm glad that you've had those opportunities and support. So we often uh, hear people talk about data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence intelligence almost interchangeably. Um, could you tell us how they are related as well as what's different about each subset? I will start with the smallest term, which is machine learning. So machine learning is kind of building an algorithm that can learn on its own using all the historical data. And AI is broader than machine learning. So artificial intelligence is more about like making a computer system that can kind of mimic human intelligence. And I, I think the key difference is that AI does not require all the historical data. And also it, include, it can include like additional components, for example, like robotics. And um, data science is kind of a broader field so it basically use all the like all data and different tools and techniques to find pattern to derive, derive information and to solve the real business problems. For example, like using statistics, visualizations, all kinds of models and algorithms. Right? It's it it has some overlap with AI and ML, but they kind of have their own area. So for example, data science is, uh, so the goal of the data science is to solve business problems, but AI, you can kind of build a ro robot just for fun, right? That's great. Uh, thank you for walking us through that. Um, so as technology evolves so fast with every growing year, uh, what is one technical innovation in AI or ML that excites you the most? In the past few years, 
So we have developed a really good data foundation for home services. And I'm super excited about our next steps. So which is building a scalable and reliable machine learning system. So currently we are building a least scoring model. So it's actually not just one model. So it will support hundreds of uh, different categories uh, or business size for home services and also serve all kinds of different business needs. So for example, like how can we prioritize our outbound phone calls, right? And which customers should we re-engage with, uh, re with first, right? So there are so many use cases and we are trying to design it in a way that it's auto scalable. So once the model figure out like what category and what's the business case, it can automatically find the like the related data feature and automatically select the tuning, select the model and tuning. And also it will find the best model itself. Um, so it, so for this, it's kind of require machine learning data foundation table and also a seamless data pipeline, a scalable machine learning computing engine and also algorithm to automate all the like model selection part, right? So eventually, so we will integrate it with other like business systems. And in order to like combine all the, like uh, all the components together to um, create a reliable and seamless flow. So we need kind of a, like systematic design for this, right? So that's the project I'm most excited about right now. Yeah, that's very exciting for sure. What is an important quality as a manager that you think is is kind of required uh, to make a team thrive? So I kind of learn all my manager skills from Home Depot. So they provide so many like in personal training and online training programs to teach uh, to teach me how to be a good manager. And I also learned a lot from our like, internal leaders who I interact with every day. So, and from my previous experience, I feel like one of the most imp uh, important quality to be a good manager is listening. So first, you need to listen to your associates' needs. So for example, like what, what are their career goals? And what are the type of work they enjoy the most? And what are the, uh, the work they really good at? So this will help me to assign the right task to them and help them grow in the area they're passionate about and also achieving the business goal. And so this also keep my team motivated and growing fast. And second, I think listen to the business partners are also important. So different teams actually have different perspectives on, on the same problem. So for example, like when you are launching a new project, like operation teams probably care about like performance, training, right? IT will care about like security concerns, resource, right? And data team will care more about like data accuracy, model performance, SLA, right? And finance will care about like what's the sales impact, what's the cost, right? So all of them are actually pretty important to consider in order to make the project success. Right. So, um, and it also helps to balance the potential conflicts. Right. So, um, and the last one I think it's important is to listen to your leaders. So they normally know more information and they have more experience and also see the bigger picture than you. So for example, sometimes I'm super focusing on delivering the project that creates all the immediate business values. However, so a lot of foundational work actually needs to plan a couple of years ahead, right? So in order to like make the team scalable in the future, so we kind of need to plan ahead. So I kind of learned those, uh, those from my current director. Yeah, that's great. I really like how you said listening is the key. I think that's a great tip for all the managers and teams out there. Um, so you've described us or told us about your busy schedule and how you balance work and your school. So what is, 
something that you enjoy doing outside of your work? What do you do to unwind? I love cooking Chinese food. So when I cook, I think about nothing. So it makes me feel relaxed and peaceful. And my cooking skill is actually pretty good. So like when the dish is ready, it smells so good and tastes good, which makes me happy. So, and also it's a hobby that my family and friends can enjoy too. So I love seeing their happy face when they really like the food. And I receive a lot of compliments from them too. And sometimes I kind of apply my process improvement skills on cooking. So I try to plan like all the steps ahead before I'm making the dishes. So for example, I try to minimize the cooking time and I try to minimize the number of cookware I have to wash later and while not sacrificing the taste of the food. And so besides cooking, um, I also like traveling. So I kind of uh, keep a, like a list of crazy things I want to do and like skydiving, like explore caves and even like ride a dolphin. So some of them sound really crazy. So I kind of use my statistics mindset to decide like whether to do it or not. So for example, I will search the death rate and compare it with the car accident death rate and to make the, uh, to make the decision of do it or not. Um, and my favorite place so far is Alaska. So I actually went there twice. So once in the winter, we stay in a like hot spring uh, resort where I saw the aurora, and we also did like ice fishing and dog sliding. So the second time we visited during the autumn time, uh, so I saw the like the salmon run there, where there's thousands of salmon like stay in the quiet and uh, fresh water. They spawn and waiting for the end of their life. So that's amazing. And we also did a, like a helicopter tour and landed on a glacier and see the uh, and saw the sunset. So that's pretty fun too. So traveling kind of gives me like many like unique and memorable uh, experience. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, definitely. I think all the things you mentioned are great ways to like unwind and like to that probably help you also refocus when you're back at work and back at school. Uh, that sounds amazing. So before we part ways, uh, what's one pro tip for listeners of Feminu Code? Yeah, so my tip will be like setting up your goal and never give up learning. So I know there's a lot of challenges in being a woman in tech, and I'm not even talking about bias here. Um, I think I'm very lucky that I never had any like sex bias in my entire career life. And I'm more talking about like women's nature roles. So for example, like giving birth to a child, right? And taking care of your kids, right? So I have a like three year old daughter and like a day job in tech and also night school, right? And I can still balance it through like all the like time management. So I thought, actually I thought about it. So like what, what, what I will do from like eight to 10 every night if I'm not doing my schoolwork, right? So I probably just like watching YouTube video or like watching TikTok, right? So will I remember any of those content like years later? I probably know. So, but after like three years of learning, so I'm about to get a new master's degree in computer science, right? And I also got a promotion. And I'm also doing my dream job with the dream team now. So I feel like, so don't feel afraid of any challenges. And if you are willing to do it, you can do it. That's great. I think time management is the key. That's the takeaway from everything you've said so far. Um, it was so nice having you, Su Jing. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so for our interested listeners, uh, if they have to reach out to you, uh, where can people find you? Yeah, probably just search my name in LinkedIn. <laughs> that, that will be the best way. 
And so I, I also want to thank Woman Who Code for hosting this event. I think that's awesome. And also I hope my story can kind of inspire or motivate more women uh, who are trying to uh, uh, work in tech or interested in the tech space. Yeah, there's definitely a lot that you said that has inspired me and I'm sure it's also inspired our listeners. So thank you so much.